In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen from the Pure Maths Paper 3, specifically Paper 3.2 from Cambridge A-Level exams from 2023. I'll be doing all this on the board. Hopefully, it'll be a lot like you're used to your teacher doing in a classroom. If you want other questions from this paper, you should be able to find it in a playlist in the description below. And if you find any of my videos uh, useful, I'd greatly appreciate liking, subscribing, or even sharing it to a friend sitting the exams this year or next. In question one, we need to solve the inequality we see up here that has uh, absolute values on both sides. And uh, the, there's two main ways to solve this. One would be graphically, basically drawing out uh, this situation, these two equations on each side, and seeing which is bigger than the other. Um, and the other method would be to algebraically, to square both sides and solve it that way. Now, most students are happier doing it algebraically, and I will, I will do that later in, in this video, but first, let me do it the graphical way because I think you can uh, learn a lot more from doing it that way. It's actually, once you get good at it, it's actually a lot easier, I believe. So uh, let's, uh, let's start by just drawing an X, Y axis. And we're just going to, instead of drawing, um, well, to draw this guy, we're gonna start by turning it into Y is equal five X minus three. Just drawing, um, drawing this, but we're, when it goes below the zero axis, we're going to invert it and bounce it up. We're going to do it all quite roughly. Um, I'll, do the, I'll do the left side slowly first, uh, just so we all get the idea of it. Um, when x is zero, uh, so when x is x equals zero, well, we quickly just get y equals minus, uh, equals minus three, or let's put in zero, three. At this point, let's put it in down here. And then when y equals zero, we get five x minus three equals zero. X is equal to three over five. And then let's put in one and two. So three over five would be somewhere around here. I'll put in a dotted line and then a straight line like this. So what happens an absolute value. So this line looks like this going all the way down, but the absolute value means it can't get below zero. If you ever get a minus, turn it into a plus. If we ever get a minus three, just turn it into a uh, plus three. So really we get this, this bounce like this. The slope of this guy is five X. And let's put it in a one and a two. And that's what uh, the left side would look like. The right side, something very similar. Let's assume this is just positive. That's what I did here. I just assumed it was all positive and then graphically I dealt with the bounce. Assume this is all positive, then it really becomes y is equal two times three, six x uh, minus 14. And to draw that, uh, we would get, it would hit minus 14. Let's go somewhere down here. And then, um, and then we would get, let's see, 14 divided by six is seven divided by uh, three uh, for, for this part. Seven divided by three would be a little past two, somewhere like here. So let's, let's put this in in a different color. Uh, put it in, I, I know you probably can't even see the different colors. Um, oh, we need to be careful here. This is a slope of five, this is a slope of six. So it's going a lot steeper. So let's see, it will, it will probably meet somewhere. I had to, I've had to skew my drawing here just to make sure it meets. It does meet somewhere over here. Um, looks like at about four or so, but I, I know the answer and it's actually a lot further on. Um, and then let's uh, do, this one goes up to 14. And it bounces up like this. And these two guys never meet. This goes steeper than this one here. So graphically, uh, what we're saying is the right side is bigger than the left side. And when is the red, if you can tell the difference of the colors I've used here, when is the red line above the black line? Well, at this point here, there's some answer, some number down here. 
from my picture it looks like about four or five but we'll find it out exactly in a moment there's some number here and everything bigger than that x is bigger than whatever this guy here let's call it um and um, let's call it four for the moment but we'll we'll change that in a minute um, and then everything less than this point here so x uh, less than let's call that one and a half for the moment is the answer so if we can just find out the exact points of these two points we're finished where we have our answer and we can do that by matching this line which was this one here and this line which was this one here that will find this point just put these two together uh, I've run out a bit of room here but let's put them together here 6x minus 14 is equal to 5x minus 3 let's uh, take that over we'll get x this side take this over we'll get um, 11 x equals 11 is right here so 4 was a terrible guess from my drawing x bigger than 11 is the right answer there and um, can we squeeze in we'll squeeze it in over here the other sum so we need this line which was y is equal well let me change that apologies we need uh, this line here which was this one up here let's call, just call it 5x minus 3 and we need this line this yellow line which wasn't this it was the opposite of this it was minus 6x equals minus 6x plus 14 because remember we bounced it off it was the minus of this line but still we can equate these two 6x comes over we get 11x uh, 3 comes over here and we get uh, 15 x is equal 15 over 11 and that actually looks about right between one and two uh, one and a half roughly um, so that guess was wasn't too bad so it's 15 over 11 and that's the answer to this question done done graphically you would sketch this just roughly you don't have to be too exact and it just gives you an idea to use oh well 5x this this the positive one of this the positive one of this just do the sum with an equals and we find 11 and then just from the picture we'd say ah oh, the positive one of this and the negative one of this that'll give us the answer over there as well this is how I would do all of these questions and I think it it gives you a better understanding of um, inequalities doing it this way but anyway let me let me rub all this out here and we'll do it just algebraically I'll leave the picture so we have a bit of an idea what's happening okay starting the question all over we just given this equation up here we don't have the picture I'll leave it there just so you can see out of interest when we get our answer what do you do well we remember that um, uh, the absolute value of minus 2 and the absolute value of 2 is the same and that means uh, so these both equal 2 and that means if we were to square both of these square both of these we would still get the same answer 4 so if we square both of these sides it shouldn't change anything and um, so that means we can solve that basically we can get rid of these absolute values that's how if we square them and um, we haven't changed the value uh, sorry we haven't changed their absolute value to each other the relative value to each other so we can still do this equation so whenever you see an absolute value you can square both sides 5x minus 3 uh, squared will still be less than if this guy is less than this guy well squaring it won't change that and uh, will still be less than 2 squared multiplied by 3x minus 7 squared and this is the equation we're going to now solve so um, maybe I don't have that much room for it but let's give it a go uh, squaring this side we get 25x squared and uh, minus uh, 50, uh, 3 times 5 is 15 2 of them is 30x plus 9 and that's less than 4 times 9x squared uh, 3 sevens are 21 twice that is 42 and then minus 7 by minus 7 is plus 49 
Okay, again, clean this up even more. X squared minus 30x is less than four times nine is 36 x squared. Four times 42 is 168 x. And four times 49 is 200 minus four, so plus 196. Right, let's get everyone on the same side. Um, we keep x squared as positive, so let's get everybody on the right side. So we leave zero on the left. We won't have changed the, the, the sign. And we'll have uh, 36 minus 25 is 11. 11 x squared. We do know, we happen to know 11 is going to be involved in the answer. Um, oh, sorry, yeah, 11. 11 was involved in both of the answers, actually. But anyway, um, let's see. We move the minus 30 over. It becomes plus 30. Minus uh, 168 plus 30 is minus 138. Use your calculator for all those things. Don't make a silly mistake uh, trying to do in your head. If I make a mistake, I can just edit it out, which I regularly do. If you keep your eye on the clock, you'll see a change when I make an edit. Um, okay, nine comes over minus nine, we get uh, 187. And so we're left with a quadratic here. There is a, a factorization of this, but, um, but uh, a lot of students are quite bad at factorizing, especially this, this is a hard one to do. Uh, feel free to use the minus b formula. You'll have to be a bit more careful getting the factor again after using the minus b formula. Um, well, let, let me factorize it and then I'll talk a little trick how to, how to use the minus b formula to help. Okay, so if, if you were able to do this in your head, we think a, a factor of 11, that's easy, 11 and 1, 11x and 1x. Now we have to find a factor of 187. Um, just try and find some. Uh, divided by 3 doesn't go in, divided by 7 doesn't go in, and 9 won't go in if 3 doesn't. Um, divided by 11. 11 does go in, and uh, again, checking your calculator, 11 goes in uh, 17 times. Then you can go ahead and check 13, that doesn't go in. 15 obviously doesn't go in, doesn't end in a 5. So we've already got to 17 again. So these are actually the only two factors along with 1 and 80, 187. So it pro pretty much has to be 11 and 17 if, if it goes in correct, uh, perfectly. So just play around with it. If 17 times 11 plus or minus another 11 um, won't work. It, 17 times 11 is like 180, so, well, 187. Um, so another 11 won't get you there. So that won't work. 17 won't work there. It'll have to be here if this works. Let's see if this works. 11 times 11 is 121. Um, and you add 17 to 121. Yes, that will work. Now let's just get the signs right. Uh, I said we add them together, but we don't have minus. So we need this guy to be a minus and we need to take this away. Two minuses do make a plus here. It all works out. This is the factor of this question. And if you're not good at doing factors like that in your head, Use the minus b formula. You will find, if you use the minus b formula, you will find 11 as an answer. So that means x, oh, I don't need to wonder, x minus 11 is a factor. You will also then find 17 over 11 is an answer. If 17 over 11 is an answer, is x equals 17 over 11? That must mean 11x minus 17 is a factor. But these do not equal zero. So we cannot just say this equals zero or this equals zero. It's, it's not as simple as that. There's no equals. Um, unfortunately, I'll, let me rub this out here and we'll do the rest of this question. Now that's a shame because I wanted to have that picture uh, just to explain a few things at the end of this, but uh, no big deal. Okay, uh, we have two numbers here, these brackets. They're just numbers. These two numbers multiply each other and they get a number bigger than zero. So that means they're a positive. So how do you get to a positive? There's two ways to do it. A minus times a minus, or a plus times a plus. So basically what I'm saying is this has to be, uh, let's see in the first one, it has to be less than zero, and this has to be less than zero. And in this one, this has to be bigger than zero, and this has to be bigger than zero. It's important I said and there. 
and um, they both have to work you can, if if this is bigger than zero and this is net less than zero won't work they'll multiply against each other plus and a minus we'll get a minus a minus number cannot be bigger than zero okay so what do the, let me write what that means um 11x and minus 17 must be less than zero in this world over here and let me put in an and and uh, x minus 11 must be less than zero so if we solve both of these uh, the first guy we get 11x is less than 17 x is less than 17 over 11 and the second guy we get x is less than 11. now both of these have to be true so just think of some numbers um, like for example 12 it's not less than 11 over here so that's out how about a number less than 11 how about say eight? Eight, it is less than 11, but it's not less than about one and a half here. Um, so we need to go down a number that's less than this guy for them to be both. Or just put that another way, x has to be less than 17 over, let me put in a little and here. That means that x has to be less than 17 over 11 for this world to work. So that's one of our answer, and that's an answer we've seen in the previous part. To do the two pluses, we do the same thing. 11x minus 17 is bigger than zero. And x minus 11 is bigger than zero. Uh, that means, uh, let's see, from the top guy, we would get here 11x is bigger than 17. x is bigger than 17 over 11. Um, and then x is bigger than 11. Both of these have to work. So you have to be bigger than one and a half and bigger than 11. That means you have to be bigger than 11. These are your two answers, which is the same as we got graphically. Okay, um, that question, I think I said it was a short one, but it went a little longer than I thought. These are the complicated questions. So many students get these wrong, which it's a bit nasty that it's very often come up as question one. Um, so hopefully you just do practice on them because they're fairly similar every time. And as they say, practice makes perfect. Okay, thank you for watching and um, I'll see you guys next time.